Hi everyone and welcome along. Today I've got one more Christmas card design for you of Father Christmas in his sleigh over a sleepy town. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so we need to first mask off an area of the card using washi tape here. So what I've got is I've got a, um, we're going to do like a, a landscape orientation tent fold card. So um, the card length in full is nine inches by uh, about five inches. So we're gonna have a four and a half by five inch rectangle here. Um, and yeah, we've masked off the area with about sort of a few millimeters, maybe half a centimeter overlap. And to begin with, I'm going to wet the whole area and we're going to do a nice uh, night sky wash. But the difference between this card and the other sort of starry sky card I've done recently is we are going to have at the bottom, we're going to have a sleepy town with a few lights on and a glow from the windows. So we need to have a color around the bottom that represents that glow. So we're going to get all our sort of blues ready for, for our night sky. But at the same time, what I want to do is wake up the yellows and oranges too. So I've got cadmium yellow and cadmium orange all ready to go. So with projects like this, it's very sensible to have maybe two or three jars of water ready because you're going to be really muddying up that water with the real contrast of using yellows and blues. So I am going to change my water already. I am going to use my, my large, well it's, it's not technically a mop brush but it's acting like a mop brush and I'm going to wet the page. And we want to get it nice and wet, but with a nice even coverage, we don't want puddling. So I'm just making sure that the water's really gone right into the corners. But after maybe one or two um, dips in the jar, I don't need any more. So we'll say thank you to this brush. And actually, no, I think this might be quite a good brush to put our washes in. Okay, so I'm gonna begin with my lighter colors first. And I'm gonna start at the bottom here with cadmium yellow. And I'm gonna clean off the brush, remove that paint. I'm gonna get through quite a lot of kitchen roll as well. <laughs> and just Bring it up a little more and then I'm going to pop in just a little bit of orange to help with that glow. And we're just going to allow that to drag up the page. So I'm just sort of picking up the paint that's there and allowing it to blend up the page. Now, sort of clean my brush off, blot it off. And now I'm gonna pick up some Payne's Gray that for me, is, I've got a quite a blue Payne's Gray. So you might want to add maybe a bit of French Ultramarine into yours or a bit of Prussian Blue just to get a bit more of a bluey dark color. And I'm gonna come down from the top here. And the skill here is to not allow us to get a weird green color in the middle. So you see I stopped quite short and I'm just going to be adding a bit more a bit more sort of concentrated Haynes grey in the corners and the sides here and the top. However, I'm going to clean my brush right off. And I'm just sort of allowing everything to seep into each other on the page. Just get a bit more kitchen roll. Okay. And now with a clean brush, just a little bit of blue creeping down in, but not too much. I'd like to think maybe this is also the moment where the sun 
is maybe just starting to rise and Father Christmas needs to get a move on. So that lovely sort of white glow in the middle will work really nicely. Okay, so we're going to let this dry 100% and then we can start layering up our design on top. The card is now completely dry. Um, you can just sort of test it with a finger. You see that the shine will have completely gone. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the little town. Um, what I want to do is get a nice sort of curved as if we're in a sort of nice little valley and I'm going to draw in just some simple sort of outlines of houses and what I want to do is I want to get a real nice uh, sort of variety of shapes and sizes And this is all we need to do at this point. It can be really rough. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create sort of silhouettes and have the yellow light just glowing through. So I'm also now going to draw in windows. They can be big round windows, little square or rectangular windows. It's up to you really. And the other thing to add in is extra little um, details that will look really cool on in silhouette. So maybe a little chimney here or there possibly a cat sitting on the roof, all sorts of things. So if you draw in just some basic shapes, what you're looking for is interesting outlines as well as windows through which the yellow color can glow. So we're left with a nice sort of little set of houses. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do some vertical lines that we're going to add in a few pine trees as well in silhouette but we don't need to draw the whole thing in there but just some vertical lines will do um, so let's wake up Mars black and I'm going to paint in these silhouettes in a combination of a very concentrated Mars black and Payne's gray I'm not going to do it entirely in a black mix because Payne's Grey is the sort of dominant colour in this piece and also because we have got the, the blue and yellow complementary colour palette um, in, a, in a sort of rough sense, it just means that adding in some of these bluey tones to the silhouette will just make the piece really come together as a whole. So you can see here, I'm just mixing up this colour and I'm going to sort of be varying which brush I use depending on how much control I need. Um, but let's begin, I've got a size zero brush and I'm going to start from this side as a left hander and I'm going to begin by painting in a silhouette pine tree. Now I've painted quite a few pine trees in tutorials recently. Um, but if you haven't seen them, essentially what we do is we have the trunk, a central vertical line, and then from there we paint strokes, I'll do it again, we paint little brush strokes out from the top in slightly sort of raggedy curves to achieve a rather nice silhouetted pine tree. Okay, so we've got those and then we then move into the very sort of clean lines of our silhouetted house. And I think it's just really important just to just keep on mixing up concentrated paint. And the beauty is even if you've done a very simple 
pencil line drawing. Once you start painting it, you can have a bit of fun and make the silhouettes maybe a little bit more elaborate. Let's make this chimney pot a little bit more of an interesting shape. We can give our roof a, a sort of central bit at the top there and maybe a little bit of a, a lip off the side. So you see, but essentially we're just painting in the silhouette all to make the best of this wonderful yellow wash we've got going on behind the scenes. Each time you have got to the bottom of a, a house or a, or a sort of fairly detailed piece, it's very important then to sort of carry on down into the edge of the card to get that silhouette really painted in. And I'm just continually mixing more of that colour just to make sure that I don't run out. What I really like is having a few of these windows that really come down into the black um, hillside. It just really, I think, just makes it look even more interesting and, and cosy. So um, for this little bit here, the last thing we can do is maybe add in a few extra details. So um, maybe one or two of the windows we can do some detail on. I did have a little cat, rather probably large cat um, in terms of scale. I'll make it a tiny bit smaller than how I drew it because we can always rub out the pencil afterwards. But do make sure when you're doing this, these last bits of detail, that your main bulk of the black paint or blacky blue paint is, is dry so that you can get your hand over and, uh, and not smudge it. The other thing I thought might be quite nice is maybe a few sort of festoons. Because everything's in silhouette, it doesn't matter that they're not glowing. Just uh, to make things look even more Christmassy. So a nice thin line and then some little bubbles. And then we are nearly ready for the stars of the show. Let's just let this all dry 100% and then we can get on with that. Now to draw in Father Christmas and his sleigh. I'm just going to move these bits out of the way so I've got lots of room. And the other thing is however dry this area is down here, there's so much pigment and paint on the page that I'm just going to get a bit of paper. It's probably sensible to just protect the painting from, and your hand, from smudging um, just by putting a piece of paper down if you want to be sort of resting your hand there. So I am going to now draw in a, a sort of curved, slight curved line for Father Christmas or Santa or Saint Nick or whoever you have delivering presents on Christmas Eve and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a sleigh so the way I like to do that is I've got that straight line a bit like maybe drawing a bath um, but we'll have it come like that and then all sorts of shapes and presents and things and then to draw Father Christmas without going into too much detail, 
and we'll have this famous hat. Maybe an arm and an arm because it's all going to be in silhouette so there we go and then we'll give him a sort of caster like that and then some reindeer so reindeer I like to do a sort of a ball for the for the chest which gives us the torso shape and then we can have a ball for the back legs and then bent front legs because they're in silhouette I like to sort of make the legs both show up and then some antlers sticking up like that. So we'll have another one. With two legs coming off the back. Of course, we're going to be painting these in. So I'm just trying to just give a nice simple silhouette that I can maybe do a bit more finesse on. So we'll get that all drawn up and start painting. I'm going to be using the same silhouette mix of black and Payne's grey and I think I'll pop in that piece of card just to protect the painting again. I've got my smallest brush, a four tenths, and I'll I'll paint these in. Now this is a good point to remind ourselves way back at the beginning when we were painting in the sky that we didn't want it to go too dark because of course we're painting in these silhouettes over the top and although we can go nice and concentrated with this which is great you do have to be careful with watercolour because it is a water-based translucent medium and it is really meant to be something that doesn't really uh, sit on top of dark colours too well. So you can see here I'm sort of using my my drawn shapes but now I've got my paintbrush in my hand I feel a little bit freer. So those back legs really splaying right out behind and the front legs bent right up and we'll get another one in there, another one in there, and then the head, have an ear behind. And then the famous antlers. And a little tail. The reindeer are done. And now on to the sleigh. So again, I'm using my smallest brush which allows me to just add in these tiny little flourishes and curls and to be quite sort of dainty with my silhouette so that we really understand what it is we're looking at
once again, it is so important that your paint is 100% dry before you try and rub out any pencil. But I love using my putty rubber. It just allows me to lightly rub and remove the pencil. It won't all come away, but it's the main thing is just to sort of get rid of the bulk of it. And then the moment of truth, oh, the extremely satisfying part where we peel away the tape and look at that crisp edge. Oh, it's lovely. Now I scored my card in advance so that I could create this lovely card. So there you go, so that's what we mean by a tent fold card. And then of course, you can write your message on the inside. Watercolor paper is fantastic for card making because of course you can paint a beautiful piece on top and then it's nice and stiff enough to stand up on its own. Thanks so much for watching that. I really hope you enjoyed that and have been inspired to create some of your own Christmas cards this year. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And if you want to never miss another video, just hit the subscription button and that little notification bell. Okay, until next time, bye.